Hi everybody, little Scotty Moss here again. Uh, I'm going to talk today about peripheral pulmonary stenosis. Um, I was surprised that there were not many views of this on the internet, which surprises me. There was, <coughs> excuse me, there was a couple of PowerPoint presentations, but even in those there was uh, very little um, images of it. So. They decided that I'm going to have to draw these and hopefully they'll, you know, stick in your head enough where when you see them on, on Echo, you'll know what to do. Um, the key to this anyways is knowing where to place the Doppler signal or the Doppler itself to get a good signal. And uh, once you do that, then you can pretty much determine whether or not the patient has peripheral pulmonary stenosis. I guess I should read the little text down here. Peripheral pulmonary stenosis is a narrowing in one or more of the branches of the pulmonary arteries. These are the arteries that carry blood from the heart to the lungs. Peripheral pulmonary stenosis is typically a congenital heart defect, a condition a child is born with. Now the nice thing about peripheral pulmonary stenosis, in most cases the child actually just grows out of it and the artery starts to grow and there's usually not a problem. Um, in cases where it's a newborn and maybe a neonate, um, it can be a significant problem. Um, they are doing uh, stent placements for uh, peripheral pulmonary stenosis to open them up a little bit when a child is having trouble, um, you know, especially feeding or something of that nature. So there are ways to fix it if it's severe enough, but usually um, they just kind of let it go and let it take care of itself. Okay, as you can see, it's short axis of the uh, aortic valve, so we're up high to make sure we can see the pulmonary artery, which I hope you know by now it's right here. Okay, and you can see the pulmonic valve right here. And aortic valve with its three leaflets. This is the left atrium, and this is the right atrium, and this is the RV outflow track. Because you're up a little higher, that's what you're catching the outflow track more than anything. Now this is the left peripheral pulmonary artery, um, and this is the right peripheral pulmonary artery, sorry. Okay, so this is the two arteries where you see the stenosis. Now, this is a little bit busy, so I think I'm going to redraw it and start over. Okay, so I redrew it again so that we can take a look at it. Um, now, the peripheral, um, this, the arteries actually can be stenotic. Um, I actually drew the drew the valve a little bit close to the peripheral or the left and right PA, um, but you know what I can fix that. So um, you know it would probably be more like this. So that gives you a better idea. Um, now, in peripheral pulmonary stenosis, what happens is there's a narrowing, usually just built up tissue, right here. It can also be down here in this area, depending upon each patient. So um, depending upon where it's at, what it does is if you run the continuous wave Doppler through here, now you remember continuous wave does what? It takes the highest velocity where you're sampling and puts it on the screen. So it's not going to put the P, uh, pulmonary valve uh, flow on the screen because the flow here is going to be higher. Okay. Now when you see this narrowing you'll also see a significant turbulent color flow. You know there would be a lot of red dots and maybe some blue dots going through that thing because of aliases 
um, and then you know it will continue and you'll end up with a mosaic kind of picture with a, a significant amount of blue and red and sometimes yellow um, just to kind of add to the fun and that'll all be in here you know where the narrowing is okay so once you see that then uh, you'll know that there's a problem with stenosis now I use color flow a lot to determine right away what I'm dealing with and I think you should too turning the color flow on before you turn Doppler on is very very important um, in fact I would always turn the color flow on first to see what I was dealing with then I know knew that you know oh here's all this turbulent flow in the left PA so I probably need to sample that first so sample that get a velocity let's say you get a velocity here's the Doppler line and you get a high velocity of one two three meters per second right so that's a 36 millimeter gradient at probably on a kid you had five and you get a 41 um, mm hg gradient okay so once you see that you know that there's a there's definitely a gradient going across that pulmonary artery now there are some doctors that will have you um, sample with a pulse wave too sorry that's a terrible pulse wave and the reason why they do that is just to get an idea of where the step up is so there'll be a little step up past the valve remember there's always a gradient past the valve and they'll sample here and you'll sample here and you show them all this stuff and they get so excited it's amazing and then you show them here and there's an obvious step up now in pulsed wave this step up will be represented by an alias you know you won't see the entire envelope when you go to sample it so what you'll see is something like this so the Doppler line is up here this is the baseline or the bottom line and you'll see that it's aliasing so you're not going to get an accurate velocity and the reason why they do this and have you sample and conti continue to sample downward is just to see where the gradient is exactly where it is and they can you know place it where they want to I'm going to circle this in red because it's a little easier to see nine times out of ten the stenosis will be right in this area it's rare that you see it down this far but occasionally it happens so you have to watch out for it the color flow will make the difference you'll be able to see where the gradient is now once you throw that continuous wave probe down there you're going to get your velocity and you're obviously going to show them that and that's going to give them a diagnosis of left PPS sorry that's a terrible L okay so that's one of the things that we're going to work on and I'm going to show you what right pulmonary stenosis looks like okay now I'm going to draw right pulmonary stenosis so or peripheral pulmonary stenosis I just always call it right pulmonary stenosis same same thing just a little shorter um, so it's identical to left other than it's being on the right side so um, you'll get a narrowing usually up here um, a lot of times in neonates newborns that they hear a murmur on and you know the kids okay but they hear the murmur once you hear a murmur as a doctor you have to find out what the hell that murmur is so um, you're almost guaranteed to be doing an echo on that kid once they hear a murmur now some of the smarter doctors um, neonatologists and peds cardiologists will pick up on a peripheral pulmonary stenosis murmur and if it's fi uh, faint and vague you know kind of hard to hear sometimes they'll let it slide and they won't do an echo it's not always but sometimes they do so depending upon the doctor how good their ears are and whether they're sure of it they'll sometimes let it go so remember I told you earlier that the most important thing in Doppler is to be as parallel to flow as possible right so 
obviously parallel will be this way and perpendicular would be this way so um, parallel is your is what you want you want parallel so that means if the Doppler is up here you're going to want to run that through this stenosis right here and like I said before continuous wave now as you can tell this is not an ideal parallel to flow situation but it's the best we can do so uh, ideally you want this to be less than 19 degrees I do believe that's the number don't hold me to it it's been three years or two years since I've been in the field because I'm old cranky <laughs> so anyhow um, if you can somehow angle the image with your transducer and make it a little bit more parallel to flow that helps in getting a true velocity so again if we turn the color flow on you're gonna mainly see red right because flow going away from the transducer is red right and let's say the left PA looks good there's nothing going through there that's turbulent now once you get here you're gonna start seeing that turbulent flow so we'll start seeing little blue dots and more of the red dots because when color flow aliases it becomes very colorful and just becomes very mosaic so let's put a lot of dots here and give you an idea of what it's going to look like so that would be right pulmonary stenosis or right peripheral pulmonary stenosis whatever you want to call it and uh, now because you're not on the perfect angle here you can assume that the velocity is going to be a little bit higher but it's not usually that far off so if you can somehow wiggle your way up a, a, a up a rib you know up a parasternal not parasternal up a what am i looking for sorry i forgot um if you can go up maybe one rib and kind of aim down a little bit sometimes you can get that right PA to be a little bit straighter and if you do then when the continuous wave goes through it you'll have a much more accurate accurate um, study so um, you'll sample here and maybe this time you get let's say it goes down to here and it's 2.8 meters per second right so because of the angle you can almost count on it truly being about three because of the angle so three again 36 millimeter gradient you add five sometimes some doctors add less than that maybe two or three and that'll give you the gradient going across the the um, right pulmonary peripheral pulmonary stenosis or right peripheral pulmonary artery now there is sometimes you see it in both arteries so you can see right in the same spot in this artery you know maybe there's a little bit of a narrowing there too so in the left there's a narrowing and in the right there's a narrowing so you'll see all these red and blue and yellow Sometimes, depending upon what color flow map you choose, you might even see some green. The thing is, what they're telling you is it's a mosaic flow, which means it's a high-velocity flow. So, right, left, you could have both. So, if a child has both, it's probably a little bit more significant. In a severe case, where let's say the velocity is, you know, 4 meters per second or 4.5 meters per second, they may consider putting a stent in or using a balloon to kind of open things up depends upon the dock um, so it, it's just a matter of what they choose and whether or not they think the child will grow out of it so symptoms make a difference obviously if the child is really having trouble breathing and having trouble feeding and there's a little bit of bluish tint around their gums or lips well then this becomes a little bit more of a cyanotic problem so we need to take care of it but anyhow so this is pretty much the whole deal with peripheral pulmonary stenosis it's not 
something that you have to spend a lot of time on. You don't have to sample it six or eight times. You know, you can sample it, as I said, you can sample it once, go through here, get a velocity, maybe get a couple of velocities so you get a good average, and then through the right and get a good average. And then once you do that, you know, put it on the screen so they can see it, put it on your preliminary form. I liked preliminary forms that you could write on because I always like to give them a little narrative as to what I saw. As long as it says preliminary report on the top of it and it doesn't really go in the chart, um, then you're okay. In the patient's chart upstairs, I mean. You can put it in the echo chart down in the lab. So um, I like to give them a little narrative, you know. Um, also, you can put this as one of the measurements you do if you want um, it depends um, each place is different so but this is peripheral pulmonary stenosis and uh, it's where to sample and how it looks so I think we've covered it all um, I'm looking for more things to uh, sample on if you guys want to leave some comments um, I can do that um, try to pick up on the comments and read them and see what happens maybe we can do a question and answer whatever you want to do um, and you know if you put a question down I'll write it up and then try to explain it to you so I hope you enjoyed this one um, we'll talk to you later